So for today's dev vlog for Bayside Games, uh, we're busy making a game called Robots Can Jump, and I thought it would be really good to show off a feature of the Marmalade SDK. Um, now the thing with Marmalade is when you're drawing stuff onto the screen, it takes care of a lot of the detailed work for you, and you don't have to go and write a whole bunch of functions just to handle things that are very common on mobile platforms. A good example of one of these things is when you're rotating the screen. Um, so on an iPhone, the screen can have four different possible orientations, and the same is for iPad and many other kinds of phones. So when we're drawing things, um, a very good example of drawing things is when we're actually handling input, we have the concept of screen quadrants. Now what these screen quadrants do is they allow us to handle input in different areas of the screen. And The thing is that when the device's orientation changes, because these quadrants are percentage based, their size changes. So currently on the on the iPhone, when our game runs and we turn the screen around to a new orientation, the size of these quadrants is not updated. And we need to update it in order to get accurate results and have the quadrants be the right size all the time. Now, Marmalade makes this very easy by allowing us to register a callback function that gets called whenever the screen surface with changes. Now, the surface is just a fancy name for the block of memory that you render all of your stuff into, generally using OpenGL. Or some, or occasionally even software rendering. So the surface has a particular width and height, and that's generally determined by the orientation of the device at any given time. So Marmalade takes care of all those details for you, but we need to know when the size of the surface changes so that we can update our own internal rectangular structures to suit. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really easy. All we need to do is use the S3E surface register function, which is provided for us as part of the AirPlay SDK, the Marmalade SDK. So I'm just going to copy that out. And the place to handle this is generally, the place to do this is generally in our initialization function. Um, one key place where these quadrants, where this sort of screen surface information is of use to us is if you've re watched previous dev blog tutorials, you'll have seen us creating this initialize quadrants function. It's a member of the player class because these quadrants are generally only used by the player. And what happens is these quadrants, uh, we set up two quadrants one on the left and one on the right of the screen, 50% of the size of the screen. So obviously that percentage means that they can be quite skinny uh, when the game is running on in portrait mode, but they'll be much wider in landscape mode. So we need to compensate for that. Now the thing is that this initialize quadrant function will already work regardless of the screen size. So all we need to do is call it at the right time. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go into the constructor of the player object. And over here you can see this is where we call initialize quadrants and to go along with that we're actually going to call this S3 surface register function. We're not going to really care about the uh, return result for now, it's very unlikely that this will fail. So the service callback that we want, if we go back to documentation, we'll just go look at this one, there's a variety of callbacks. Um, so the one we're interested in is when the screen size changes, so we're just going to copy that constant. So this is called when the screen size orientation has changed. So let's go back there, and we're not doing anything too fancy in our functions. So there we go, that's better. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is declare a callback function that looks sort of similar to this signature here. So that's really easy, we just copy the signature. And this is going to be a little bit tricky because we're actually going to have to create a static function. But it's not a big deal, we just have to make one that looks similar to the function we have here. And we're going to call it um, on screen size changed callback. Now you can have multiple callbacks, so that's fine. And it just looks like that. And we're going to make this a member of the player class too. Just give it a comment. Okay. So let's just go and pop that in as a private static member function because we're not going to call it from outside of this class. That's all we need to do there. Okay, now we can call it. Um, that's it. So that's going to give the address of the function. And then user data, this is very important. Um, because it's a static function, there is no this pointer. Even though it's deceptive because it looks like it's part of a class. And it looks like it would have this pointer. But in here, this doesn't exist. So this may only be used inside a non-static member function. So the ID is actually pretty good in telling us that that's not what we want to do. So 
The solution to this is very, very simple. We're just going to pass in this, and we're going to actually um, cast it to void. Actually, we don't need to do it because it's already a pointer, so any pointer can be cast to void in C++. Um, it's not always the greatest thing to do, but in this case, it's fine. We don't really, we're not going to do anything too crazy in here. So what's going to happen is when this function is called, this pointer is going to be passed in as user data, and then we just have to cast it back to a player type. So doing that is very simple. We just say do this as equals user data, and then we cast it. Now, there are better and more safer ways to do this, but for the purposes of brevity, I'm not going to go too crazy with doing, uh, you know, type checked uh, reinterpret casts and dynamic casts, and also, which we could, but I really don't think it's necessary in this case because of how limited the application of this function is. And then the only other thing we need to do is call our initialize quantities function, which, when the screen size changes, we'll pop in here and we'll update our quadrant sizes and everything will be fine because the next time we render we'll be using these quadrant sizes to render All right. so let's just give that a quick go and we can actually try this out on the simulator um, the simulator actually allows you to change the screen orientation on the fly too just like a mobile device that's obviously incredibly convenient because it means we don't actually have to deploy onto the phone oh, did something wrong oh, of course this must return a value we'll just return zero just check the documentation. It's possible that this may require some sort of return value. So no return value is expected, so we don't have to, it doesn't care what, what we give it. Um, the other interesting thing is that the system data, which was, if I recall, also a void pointer, is an instance of the surface orientation. So in future, we might actually use that uh, to do more sophisticated things with the surface orientation. So that's actually quite interesting. Like, um, it tells us a little bit more about the pitch and the um, blip direction and stuff like that. Um, but in our particular case, we're not too worried about that. We just really care about the sizes. So let's try that. It's running, and everything seems good so far. The uh, quadrant sizes are still correct. So that's all as before. Now let's go in and change our surfaces orientation. It's sort of the simulating rotating the device. So let's rotate it 90 degrees to put it on its side. And you'll notice that we're running a sort of rectangular surface, so it should become portrait mode now. Okay, so one thing to bear in mind is that there's a difference between orientation. Yeah, so we'll just go back to this dialogue. There's a difference between the orientation and, you know, it actually rotating the device. So that's not going to work out quite the way you expect. If you expect this window to actually turn around, that doesn't work. Like the width and the height are independent. So just bear that in mind, but it's effectively done that for us. But now we notice something very important here and that's that our quadrants are still the same size. And that's wrong. They shouldn't be that size anymore. They should be sort of matching the size of the window. They should be sort of quite skinny. So what we need to do is we just put it back to the old orientation. Zero. And let's go and stick a breakpoint on that function and see if it's actually getting called. Because it may be that it's not getting called. So the first thing we need to check. So let's change the orientation and see what happens. Okay, it is getting called, definitely. So it's being called from deep within AirPlay, so that's fine. Now let's go and see what's happening in initialized quadrants. So the quadrant size is still the same as before. We may need to actually... Ah, uh, okay, I know exactly what's happening here. If you look closely at the get screen size, this is a member variable, so it's been stored beforehand. Uh, what actually needs to happen here is, um, what's happened is I've probably just initialized this once as an optimization, and it turns out it was a premature optimization, my favorite kind. So once the game app is constructed, it gets given a screen size. So we actually need to get rid of this. Um, it's really not, not good having this. We can just get rid of it and just dynamically return the screen size. 